Hi, I'm Sarah Wilkie, publisher of The Upper Room. Welcome to our video series, Cycle of Grace. We believe these videos will enhance the teaching found in the accompanying book. In our stressful world, people in ministry, whether clergy or lay, sometimes get discouraged, resentful, and even burned out. Jesus felt the pull of these negative emotions, but they never weighed down his ministry. That's because there was a distinctive flow to the way he received grace and strength. Here today to offer guidance on this cycle of grace is Trevor Hudson, a Methodist minister, international speaker, and author from South Africa. He'll be joined in the discussion by Reverend Jerry Haas, spiritual director of The Upper Room. We hope this presentation will help sustain and enrich your leadership in the church and in the world, not just now, but for many years to come. We also encourage you to utilize the book, Cycle of Grace, which offers much more depth to the sessions you are about to see. Welcome, Trevor. Well, friends, it's really a, a joy and a privilege to be able to uh, share with you the Cycle of Grace. Uh, the Cycle of Grace was put together by a British doctor and psychiatrist uh, by the name of uh, Dr. Frank Lake. Uh, I first came across his writings uh, when I was a student at Rhodes University uh, way back in the mid-70s uh, when I had to read his massive book called uh, Clinical Theology. Uh, I had the real privilege of being able to study with one of his students, uh, an Anglican uh, priest by the name of the Reverend Anne Long. And Anne had been one of Frank's uh, students. And so she was able to give me some of the background to this model, which I find very, very helpful. Uh, Dr. Lake had contact with many of the uh, British missionaries that went out to India. And the one thing that struck him very deeply was that within a few months of these missionaries arriving in India, many of them began to lose a sense of their energy and enthusiasm, vitality for ministry. And obviously as a doctor and as a psychiatrist, he was uh, concerned about this and also wanted to respond uh, in some way to this. At that time, uh, his path crossed with the path of a Swiss theologian, a man by the name of Emil Brunner. And they got together, and together they began to reflect on this, that many of these missionaries uh, were losing uh, some of the energy, enthusiasm, vitality for, for their work. So what they did was they made a decision together, this doctor and this theologian, to reflect upon the gospel life of Jesus because they believed that there was something in Jesus' life that they could learn from. Jesus faced enormous stress, enormous pressure, um, enormous opposition, and yet not once do you see Jesus cynical or resentful uh, or burnt out. Yes, he, he was tired. Yes, he got weary. But there, there, there is obviously a sense in Jesus' life of, of faithfulness to his call, of vitality in his ministry. And they wanted to get in, as it were, on his, on his secrets. So what they did together was that they, they read through the gospel life of, of Jesus over and over and over and over again. And what emerged from their reading was a belief, a conviction, that Jesus lived in a certain way, a distinctive way, which they called a cycle of grace, and that's obviously what I want to what I want to share with you. The first thing uh, about the cycle of grace that I want to point out is that Jesus, they believed, lived in a balance between input and output. He was able to give because he had received. I want to read to you just in a moment from, uh, from Mark chapter 1. And as I read to you, you will notice this balance, this input, this output. Uh, Mark chapter 1, uh, verses 29 uh, and onwards, and I'm going to read from the NIV. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the house of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. 
So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and all the demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. And Jesus replied, Let us now go somewhere else to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. And so he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. And so you can see in that, just in that snapshot uh, of a day in the life of Jesus, you can see this tremendous output in ministry, but you can also see the moment of input, the moment of receiving, the moment of being replenished. Uh, and, this is, and this is what uh, Brunner and Lake wanted to reflect in the cycle of grace. Now you will see in the diagram, in the cycle, that there are two, and you'll notice this by the arrows, there are two places in which grace, as it were, flows into the life of Jesus. It begins with acceptance. Jesus knew who he was. Uh, Brunner and Lake pointed out very strongly that, that Jesus only begins his ministry once he has received his identity from the Father. So we think, for example, of the baptism. That moment when uh, John the baptizer uh, takes, is with Jesus, baptizes him, the Spirit of God comes down upon him and Jesus hears a voice from heaven saying, you are my son, my beloved, in whom I'm well pleased. Now Jesus is ready for ministry. He knows who he is. He has a profound sense of identity. And Lake was, Frank Lake was convinced that it's very, very dangerous to move into ministry uh, without, this, uh, without this sense of knowing who you are. Now there's one other moment where Jesus uh, is reminded of his identity uh, and you will know that that was the moment of transfiguration. Just before he moves towards J Jerusalem, uh, he goes up the Mount of Transfiguration with three of his close friends and there again uh, he hears the Father saying, uh, you are my beloved. Now Jesus is ready to die. And so what uh, Frank Lake suggests in the cycle of grace that, that all ministry begins with a deep knowledge of our acceptance by God in Jesus Christ. That that is the primary entrance of grace uh, into our lives. And that is the uh, first part uh, of the cycle of grace. This concludes the first session in our video series. You can learn more about being called to ministry in the book, Cycle of Grace. In our next session, we'll look at the many things that gave Jesus sustenance and strength.